Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another talk series by Liab. We are an e-learning startup focused on helping Gen Z Filipinos transition to working life. We do online events like this one and even programs like a free mock interview program starting this Saturday, all to make sure that students and fresh graduates, basically the next generation of the next Filipino workforce, um, have access to resources that are helpful in early career development. My name is Deirdre and I'm the founder of LIA, but also the moderator for this entire series. So speaking of these series, we organized this because we wanted to introduce you to you learners to not just where to look for jobs, but also so you can hear tips from representatives from online job boards on how to stand out on their specific platforms. So we started this series on Monday with LinkedIn. Yesterday, we had Workbean. And today, we'll be introduced to Fast Jobs. So we have a representative here from Fast Jobs. Her name is Cheska. And she'll be doing a short introduction of, of Fast Jobs. And then we'll be hearing some tips, maybe specific to the platform and, you know, tips on job hunting in general from Cheska. So I'm not going to delay this any further. And I want to give Cheska the opportunity to really give justice to what Fast Jobs can do. So she'll be the one to, to introduce it. But um, at any point of this live video, if you have any questions at all for Cheska about Fast Jobs, about job hunting in general, you can leave them in the comments section and then we'll read them after her talk. So. I'll be back after her talk, but today, let's really just focus on, on Cheska and the tips that she's going to leave us with today. Hi, Cheska. Take it away. Hi, Dee. So, yes, thank you so much. And I'm actually very excited to also give you guys some tips and insights to help you with job hunting. Because as um, Dee mentioned earlier or in our previous conversations, it's really hard um, for a lot of fresh graduates to find jobs, especially with the COVID pandemic. So to give you guys um, a bit of background about myself. So first, um, I started off as a freelancer. And um, I tried, of course, I went through the struggles and the nightmare that is job hunting. So from rejections and so on. And finally, I landed my first job at a startup and then um, continued my growth. And now um, I'm working for Fast Jobs. So Fast Jobs is essentially um, an online jobs platform that is catered or specifically focused to blue collars as well as entry level job seekers. So here, um, com uh, compared to other um, job portals, for example, where they look for more experienced or um, C-level type of positions, in fast jobs, this is where you can actually get a footing um, in terms of gaining more experience, um, really testing out the waters um, in, well, the professional world. So um, yeah, I'm going to show you guys and give you guys some tips. So some not necessarily focused on the platform itself, but rather in, um, in job hunting in general so um first things first um hold on oh here you go so first one is to set up your profile now um, i'm sure that the other speakers has um, highlighted this one so setting up your jobs profile is basically like your professional dating profile but rather than getting a date you're trying to land yourself an interview so it's really important that you put your um, best digital foot forward so um, it's good to actually um, highlight if you could start work at any time or is there a certain um, time frame where you can start working are you looking for part-time or full-time um, what is your highest education and um, in the introduce yourself or basically your banner so this is basically your online elevator pitch because when you pass your online um, application you can't really talk to the HR yet so you need to have a really good banner to well to kind of give you an upper hand in applications because um, we all know that because of the pandemic we all realize that there's nothing better than actual human interaction but in this case there's none so you really have to maximize what you have to stand out or for your applications to stand out um, next step would be to build your resume so again as I mentioned um, resume is really important because that's what the first thing that the HR will um, see. So it's basically the first layer of your job hunting. 
So always have a digital digital copy with you. So it's like your house keys. You would never leave without it. Um, what I do um, mostly is um, for the jobs portals that I'm on, for example, in Fast Jobs, it's basically the one or two page um, resume that we, we've known to need, right? But at the same time, I always have a PDF version of this where it's more comprehensive. So I would highlight um, my uh, the roles that I've had, what I do, and even highlight the um, highs of my career. For example, the different milestones that I've reached, the KPIs I've met or exceeded. So that's a really good thing to highlight because it's always quality over quantity for um, recruiters because it doesn't matter how many um, experiences you have, but rather um, the quality of these experiences. Are these going to help them um, or become an asset or a value for these companies? So next um, tip number four is what can you bring to the table? So for fresh graduates, um, the most, um, the most actually um, one of the really bad or struggles that I've experienced back then was that I didn't have work experience. And um, at that time, freelancing wasn't really a huge thing here in the Philippines. So a lot of recruiters didn't really give um, much value to that yet. So what I did was I actually highlighted what um, software that I knew how to use. For example, Google Analytics. Um, we have graphics, Photoshop, Illustrator, um, Microsoft Office, um, CRM, and stuff like that. So at least they know that if you know how to use these um, softwares, um, sure enough, you have the specific skills attributed to these softwares. And um, another thing, it's not um, required, but I also like to give a sneak peek of my personality because, um, again, when you send in your online applications, these are, well, you can't talk to them. They wouldn't know who you are. To them, you're just um, a bunch of letters or words on a piece of paper, right? So. I would always put um, a little bit of facts about me. So I love music, I'm addicted to coffee, and so on, just to give it a little bit of myself um, on a piece of paper rather than just a piece of paper. Um, next, this one I cannot highlight or stress enough, especially now um, with this um, current situation. I know we are all um, really desperate to find a job, but desperate times do not ever call for desperate applications. So it takes two to tango, and that applies not only to the employers, but also to the job seekers. I have this golden rule that thou shall not send resumes to random job postings. So it's not spin the wheel or the more applications, the more chances of winning. So it's really important that you send applications to companies that you actually want or are interested to work for. Because um, think of it this way, um, there's you who sends out um, applications to just basically random companies that um, you don't even know you're sending anymore. And imagine how many other job seekers out there who is actually just as desperate as you are, and they would also send over that same amount of applications. And think of that one HR in that particular company trying to filter out um, these applications. So not only are you lengthening the process for them, you're also potentially um, hindering the one person who's actually really interested in that company from landing the job. So again, it's um, back to being a community of job hunters. So yes, the desperate times do not call for desperate applications. And which brings me back to this um, point. So do your research. Um, the same effort and energy that you um, give to stalking your crush, I know I am definitely um, a huge, um, I'm guilty of that you also have to give that same effort to companies that you're planning to apply to. So before applying, you try to check out the company culture, the growth opportunities, what kind of people you'll be working with. So um, there are a lot of um, websites that you can check for that. We have Glassdoor, you have LinkedIn, um, even Job Street has um, this um, feature where you can check out the different um, feedback that um, past employees um, or even um, people that have 
that have communicated with their companies before do. So it's important that you know that you're going to grow in this company because you're not just building, um, you're not just building like uh, financial stability. You're also trying to build your career. So it's really important that your first company or your second or your third and or your so on would contribute to growth. Otherwise, there's really not um, much sense of working at a company that you know you're not going to grow in. So Anting Pugot, will you love the company as much as Joe loved love? So if the answer is no, then you might want to double check or rethink um, your choices. Um, next, it's not about the money. So do not be blindsided by that little um, salary range that you see on the box because at the end of the day, um, depending on, let's say, your um, what you bring to the table or your experiences or how much value you give to the company when you work there, um, your salary is always negotiable. That's, um, that's what I learned from experience. So always, always um, use whatever resources that you have to get to know the company and not just the salary range because no amount of money is worth your mental health at the end of the day. So make sure that you're always happy um, to actually wake up the next day and continue working despite all odds. Next, ask questions. So the HR doesn't bite, okay? And when you're in an interview, it doesn't only mean that HR does all the asking or the talking. It's your first date, you get to know the company, so don't be afraid to ask questions because um, little do you know, these um, people actually appreciate these questions. So just let it off the table, ask them um, how they plan to um, help you grow in the company, what kind of culture they foster, what are the benefits that you're going to receive besides your salary. These are things that you'd want to um, kind of get out of the way so that you can really focus on the, all the, the elephant in the room, which is, will I be a good fit or will my personality, will my values be a good fit for the company? For nine, um, tip nine rather, there's no three month rule after an interview. So if you feel ghosted and you get really anxious because, oh, they haven't contacted me in a week. So don't fret. It's perfectly acceptable to follow up with HR regarding your application. So for example, for fast jobs, we actually have a chat feature where um, employers can immediately just um, give you a ping um, to schedule an interview, to um, ask a couple more questions before the interview. So in the same way, you can use these features to actually ask them um, nicely, of course, that, hey, um, just wanted to know if the role is still open, um, how's the status of my application, and so on. On, so that at least you know where you stand. There are no gray areas, and it's not um, it's not the fault of the HR. Sometimes um, things are really busy, and sometimes they can't really update everyone right away. So um, it would help to actually ping them as well every now and then. But don't do that twenty four seven. That's <laughs> that's not the way you do it. Probably every um, week or so until um, yeah until you get a, a clear answer. And lastly, do not be discouraged. I know rejection sucks. I've had countless of rejections before I actually um, landed a job. And it's fine to be sad about it, but it's not the end of the world. So from experience, one thing that really helped me was um, every time HR tells me that they're not gonna go through with my application, I would either um, reply to the email or if it's through a call, I would ask them if there's anything I can do to improve or better my chances at landing um, my, the next job or facing the next interview. And honestly, that is probably the one thing that really helped me land jobs um, right now, um, not just jobs, even freelance projects. That's one of the um, biggest things that helped me because those tips um, were really helpful because um, let's face it, HR knows what they're doing. They've, um, they know who they're looking for and yeah, they, they're the most knowledgeable about how to land these something. So don't be afraid to ask them for tips. If they don't reply, it's fine. And if they do, they're gold mines. Really, they're the biggest gold mines you'll ever see. Um, a bonus. So never limit your search. So I know there's a lot of 
jobs portals out there. But beyond that, I would definitely recommend you do um, further research. So for example, if you're like me, who has a heart for startups or who wants to be part of a startup community, I would definitely check out AngelList. So it's one of the biggest startup communities in the world. So um, aside from finding jobs, um, yeah, aside from finding jobs all over the world or in the Philippines or remote work, you can also actually reach out to different startup founders or startup um, seniors um, and ask them for tips. And if you're actually wanting to build your own startup someday, this is a good place to actually look for potential investors. So they have a really good um, resource center as well. Um, another thing is tech in Asia. So I actually found fast jobs through um, tech in Asia. I found out that this is the kind of culture they foster. Um, these are the job openings and so on. So it's good to check this out, um, especially since um, right now, the, basically the, it's the, the age of digital transformation. So you might want to check what are the new tech trends um, next is Business Blueprint. So this isn't a jobs platform in any way. It's actually uh, more of a business coaching in Australia, but they have a really good um, blog section. So I like to read through those. They give really good insights about leadership, about um, the kind of companies that would excel. They give um, a lot of industry um, tips that could actually help you with your job search. And last, um, the most popular, Ted, um, TED Talks. So when I'm sad or when I'm down or when I just really want um, insights, I would take the time to read or listen to TED Talks. So yeah, um, job hunting doesn't mean um, just simply finding jobs. It's, it will also help you grow as a professional because you'll be talking to different people in different um, industries, different companies. So even in that just small amount of time during interviews, you could actually use that to learn a little bit more and bring whatever you can learn from them and further like further in in your career you could do more research about it um, be it the industry be it their product and so on these are some things that you could actually bring into your next um to your next um job um job search or job hunt or next interview so um yeah that's um, about it for me all right. Thank you so much, Jessica, for, for those tips. Um, and I really appreciate like some of the things that you said, especially that you said that we are a community of job seekers. Like even I think in, in times where it feels like, okay, I just graduated and then now I'm competing with everyone else for for a specific job post. I love that you uh, you reminded us that it is we're all job seekers. Um and it's hard to also treat each other as competition. Like, um, I remember, I just wanted to share a story because that really struck a chord with me. Because I remember when I was a fresh grad, um, I would recommend my friends to like apply for companies that I got rejected in. Um, because that's really just it. Eh? Um, um, it's, if it's not a fit for me, that doesn't mean that it's not a fit for anyone. So like, I find no reason why I shouldn't share it to to someone that this company is hiring or that they should apply, especially like coming from like yesterday's talk um, about like hidden gem hidden gem companies. Um, not a lot of people are are aware of like some of the smaller companies, so really just giving them uh, the signal boost for that. Something I also do is like if I'm the one who turned down a company, um, I try my best to like. Uh, well, I think like one of my friends could be a fit for the role, so I tried to refer someone even though I said no to them. Well, I, obviously not for cultural reasons, but just because um, I would never refer a friend to a company that has bad culture. But um, but more of like, oh, the, the role itself wasn't a fit for me, but I think it's a fit for, for one of my friends. So I really appreciate that you said that we are a community of job seekers, so... I, I just love that. I, I wanted to ask more about that. Like, like, is there like a story behind that? Why you feel that way? Um, I just wanted to learn more about why you think like that. 
Yes, so actually one of the reasons why I brought that up was because um, early on in my job hunting experiences, so there was this one company that I really desperately wanted to work. Like I actually cried for like almost a week when I found out that I didn't get it because they went for someone with more experience. I mean, totally, I understand it, but of course it hurts to be rejected. And then um, I think two weeks later, um, the HR called me and then told me that, oh, hey, Cheska, so um, there's uh, the girl we hired actually mentioned um, that she applied for this company, this role, and they, she told us about um, what they needed. That was, I, I thought about you, and then um, I think you'd be a really good fit for this company. So why not try? And um, she gave me the details on um, where to send my um, resume. And then honestly, that was one of the most um, touching things that I felt, because at least I know that it's not always about competition. It's not always about, um, yeah, it's not always about the suit and tie and all that. So at the end of the day, we're all just on the same boat. We're just really trying to get by. And uh, yeah, it's really amazing to um, feel that. And right now I'm actually helping as well um, my friends and even strangers find jobs. And then um, to the point where I would introduce them to each other now then to like, you know, um, help them as well. And one of the group chats that I'm in actually fostered started fostering this community na like hey guys i did um i didn't get this job but i think um, one of you um mentioned that you have skills for this so why not try to apply here's the email just send it and stuff like that and later on weeks later um i like i received notifications that hey guys i got a job guys i landed my second interview and so on so it's a really nice and fulfilling kind of um thing to know that at the end of the day we're all just on the same boat. So it's not a competition really. We're all trying to grow. We're all trying to um, become professionals in our own field. I love that it was HR who reached out to you and told you about this opportunity because that's one of the, the sneaky little things that I teach some of our <laughs> learners. Like, you know, you think even if you get rejected, you thank the HR for their time and everything. Um, and they already know what you're looking for, right? So, like, just sneak it in there that, like, um, by the way, like, I'm still interested in a marketing role, even though I didn't get this one. So, if you have any opportunities that you know of, um, I'm available, that sort of thing. Of course, in a more gracious manner. Um, but it's, it's, you know, shoot your shot. You never know what kind of opportunities will land in your lap. If, if they don't send you an opportunity, then that's also okay. At least, at least you tried, right? Um, yeah. We have one question here from from the Facebook Live, which is um just curious: Is it a bad thing when you don't have any questions to ask the interviewer? I, I have my own answer to this, but I want to hear I want to hear yours. Um, no, it's not a bad thing to not have questions. Honestly, um, there were times um, in my experience where the interviewer asks if you have questions and I just black out. So I would normally say none at the moment, or I would be just really frank or candid about it and say that um, right now I'm all nervous <laughs> because of course it's an interview. Um, I may not have questions now, but I may have them later on when I fully digested the whole interview. And I would always ask, although they would usually say yes, it's okay, but I would normally ask out of, um, out of politeness, if it's okay, if ever any questions rise um, after this, can I ask you? Can I text, give you a text message or email you? So those things, um, yeah, it's not a mortal sin. <laughs> We're all people. <laughs> I, I know, like, it's not a mortal sin, but I really try to like, when I really try to bait it out of like my interviewees, for example, like e even as I wrap up the interview, I remind them like, like, well, you have my number now, so if you have any more questions, like, you can just, like, text me anytime or email me anytime about this. And it's my way to, like, like throw them a bone, like, this is your chance to be memorable. Send me a question even after yes. this. Um, it's So it's not a bad thing. Um, but it's also, I guess, like, um, a missed opportunity. I think that's what it is for me. It's a missed opportunity to be memorable. It's a missed opportunity to, like, show your interest for the company or show like further like how you think which is sometimes what interviewers um are looking for like okay it 
depends on the type of question that you ask. It also reveals so much about you. Um, it reveals like, okay, she asked about culture or she asked about this. That means like this, this person is probably concerned about like uh, what the culture is like in the company or um, some of my really like favorite questions are, are the ones that are really about the business itself because yeah. that signals to me that this person has done their research. They know what the company is doing and they already have, I guess I'm hoping they already have ideas on how um, to further the company and that's why they ask this really good question. So it's not a bad thing, but it is a huge missed opportunity, which is why I remind our learners um, to really take advantage of that, uh, of that opportunity when, when the interviewer asks you if you have any, any questions. Yes, and I actually have this default questions. Like if ever I go for interviews or if I try to pitch to um, a freelance client, I always have this um, question. So for um, companies that I'm trying to apply for, I would always ask, um, what are my growth opportunities here? Like it doesn't have to be a monetary value. Um, some companies would surprise me by saying that, hey, we're going to um, you pick a course, we'll buy it for you or something like that. And for my freelance clients, I would always ask if they are open to um, my input or suggestions, or is this, you give me the brief and that's it. I just execute. So those are the two things that I would normally ask. All right. Um, while we're waiting for more questions on the Facebook Live, I actually um, was drawn to another thing that you said during your talk, which is like desperate times don't call for desperate applications. Um, I mean, I, I agree with this, but like I was wondering like what's your take? Can employers uh, tell if you are if you're actually desperate and is that um, really ultimately like a bad thing? Well, this one, it's a little tricky. That's um, that's why I mentioned as well earlier that um, when you send desperate applications to the point where you don't even know what companies you're sending these applications to, you're actually giving more work to um, the HR or the recruiter who's trying to find the right fit because then it's going to give them um, more time or it's going to require more time for them to screen. Um, will these people be a fit? Um, are these people actually interested in the role? And because sometimes they can't tell if it's a desperate application, um, they might end up skipping those that are actually interested. And then, for example, if they're ready, um, these are the things that I've um, experienced um, when recruiting as well. Um, I, we were ready to give an offer, like we actually have the documents ready. And then last minute, the person said that, oh, hey, the company that I really wanted to work for um, contacted me. And yeah, I decided to go to that interview instead and wait until um, I could, um, I could um, accept your offer, which um, ultimately, ultimately made me sad because during that time, I've also interviewed a lot of applicants who were really, really interested in the role, but unfortunately, um, yun lang, um, the other person had more experience, had more know-how or technical know-how. So in a way, um, it also felt like sayang naman, um, we would have used more time for these applicants who were really interested and see how it would have gone. Yeah, and from the HR side, I know we... We invest a lot of time in getting to know applicants, right? Um, even just like replying to applicants, updating them and everything um, takes some effort. Not a lot of effort, but it, it does take some effort. And yes. what's sad is like, so for me, um, I can sometimes tell when it's like a person applying who's really interested in the company or just happened to see us on one of these job boards and then just like applied randomly to whatever job is available. So like, those are the applications that I really like ask myself, like, is it even worth the effort to reply to this person who obviously like doesn't know what we do, doesn't know like what the role is about and just decided to apply. Cause like what, like we can see their profiles, right? Um, yes. uh, I'm not so sure how it works from the hiring side of past jobs, but I bet they can also see the profiles of the people um, applying. And so, and then you take a look at their profiles and it's super duper different from like, what the role posted is. Um, and then you can just sort of tell like, okay, this person just decided to click the 
the apply button, probably didn't even super read through the job description that we spent a lot of time crafting. Um, so there are like applicants like that that make us think, okay, do we even, you know, bother to reply? Um, as much as possible, I do. I do try to reply. Um, but it's just sad that it's going to take some effort to even just let them know that we cannot entertain them simply because it's really just not a fit. And so the ones I appreciate the most are the ones who really like um, maximize the features on these job boards and really like, aside from just clicking apply, um, yeah. there are opportunities for you to explain why are you applying to this job? Why are you, um, why are you interested in this company? So just like maximizing features like that um, would allow you to stand out and signal that, okay, I'm not, I'm not super desperate here because I am applying very intentionally to this job. Yes, exactly. Um, one thing I would really maximize in any job boards is the, the filtering um, features that they have. So I'm not, um, I'm not huge on the finance industry, for example. That is not my forte. I mean, I will try if I have to, but it's really not in my general interest. So I would normally tick that off, but rather I would um, tick those boxes that actually fit me so marketing um, ip and so on so this will help you narrow down your search and it will save you so much time um scrolling through the different um jobs available so yeah that's one thing that would really help you all right um so thank you for that tip Cheska, because um sometimes also like from the job seeker side i don't think we're truly maximizing all of the features available to us um, because typically when we log on, log on to these job boards, okay, we just like browse whatever jobs, right? Um, but thank you for that tip because at least uh, at a certain level, you are becoming more and more intentional even by the simple fact of filtering the jobs available to you. Um, yes. Now that we don't have any more questions on the live, I just wanted to wrap up because like very neatly, this was not planned, but like for the past two days, we've been wrapping up the the discussions with like, how how did you get hired? How did you use uh, like like for example for LinkedIn? Uh, Miko was telling us about how she used LinkedIn to leverage her network and eventually land her a job in LinkedIn. Um, yesterday, Cass was saying that why uh, she's really into hidden gem companies was because she got like one of her jobs at a hidden gem gem company. Um, so I wanted to learn more about your story and I guess like a little bit of how it relates to to fast jobs because you mentioned earlier that you started out freelancing and then after freelancing it was then that you decided to start like looking for looking for jobs so if you can tell us a bit of more like stories about how that happened like that transition from freelancing and then now um working at a company Yes, so um, originally, um, yeah, freelancing, but it gets lonely. So you don't have workmates to um, to pester um, every now and then and so on. Um, I decided that, hey, I wanted to actually work for an actual company this time. And by that time, I already knew that I, w I didn't really enjoy um, super corporate settings. I like the um, startup environment where it's just really hustle. Um, it's a flat organization. And basically, everyone is just there to collaborate and make something out of nothing. So something like that. Um, that's already the culture that I really wanted to um, work for. So um, yeah, I landed my first job, which was Wood Sites, but it's now currently known as Sites of Scale. And during that time, I was basically um, because it was such um, it was such a company in its early stages. I was I had to be really flexible to handle multiple roles all at the same time. So that was really fun. But one thing that I really enjoyed was trying to find um, people for our clients. So a lot of them were Australians. They were looking for virtual assistants or they were looking for. Um, people to help them manage their business. So those are the things that I enjoy doing. I was try like I was trying to look for the right match. And then I told myself maybe I wanted to be HR or I wanted to not specifically HR, but I wanted to tackle that industry that helps connect people to jobs. So I started looking through one was, um, of course, job street. I looked for job openings, but it somehow didn't feel right at that time. So I did more digging. I found um, 
I found sites like AngelList, I found sites like Tech in Asia, and ultimately I found um, fast jobs. I sent in my application, and at that time I didn't really know much about the company. So during the waiting period, I did a little bit of research. So I found out that they were um, focused on blue collar workers or entry level workers. And then I remembered that, hey, I had this problem before. And I, if I knew that there was a job um, portal that would cater to a fresh grad like me back then, it would have helped. It would have been such um, a huge help. So I was like, okay, this is this is good. And then um, later on, I got an interview. I learned more about the culture. I actually kept stuttering. I was so nervous that I was full of nerves. But um, ultimately, um, they were candid enough to tell me that um, they have other people to interview, but they will be in touch um, within the week. And um, within the week then come, um, as per my tip earlier, I started feeling ghosted. I was so anxious, like, did I get the job or should I apply to the next one? So what I did was I swallowed my pride <laughs> and texted um, the person who interviewed me. I'm like, hey, is the job opening still there? Um, I, I wanted to know that, um, I wanted you to know that I'm still very much interested if it's still open. And two days later, I received the reply and told, and yeah, that's basically how my journey started. And since then, um, yeah, I've enjoyed working for the company. I've seen the difference that it made for people and not only for people but for companies as well so it's a really fulfilling job and yeah it's been hard the past couple of months given covid um, a lot of companies um froze hiring but um at the same time it's interesting to know that um, some people are reaching out as well saying that hey we're hiring but we're not um capable of hiring online so can you help us so that's what we um ended up doing as well so um, we started experimenting with features that could allow them to further um, help them hire um, despite the social distancing measures. So, um, yeah, it's slowly but surely we're definitely changing lives. So it's, it's very, I feel like I'm in my place or in, I'm in my zone. <laughs> that, that is very great to hear, Cheska, especially knowing that like um, you we're having a hard time like looking for jobs specifically tailored for uh, i guess like entry level jobs which which i totally get because sometimes on these job boards it's really a whole mix of like okay i'm looking at like some uh some openings here and then when i when i open like a job post of something i'm interested in it suddenly shows me oh requires like x years of experience yes. in this <laughs> and that and it's like oh okay oh no okay the next job post cuz I, I i can't apply to this so it's very interesting that like fast jobs um, is actually more focused on the entry level ones so that you have a very specific target of like, okay, these are like the sorts of jobs that you can expect from this, um, from this job portal. So there's less like, it's less likely that you will have a feeling of like, okay, this job is not for me because it's looking for someone really experienced. Um, and and I really appreciate that Fast Jobs is working in that in that space right now very specifically, um, and especially to what you said, um, not just on the employee side but on the employer side as well. Hearing that you are helping um, those companies who haven't really tried hiring online yet, um, that you're really trying to build around their experience as well. So that that is a great signal for for us as well, like for job seekers who you know, want to find companies also that aren't really digital before. Um, now we have a job board where we can look for them as well. Yes, yes, definitely. All right. So before we wrap up, um, I wanted to ask if you have anything to promote. Um, you can take this opportunity to promote anything that you want to our, to our audience today and maybe the ones who will watch um, after this. Yes, um, definitely. So you guys might want to check um, Fast Jobs. We have a mobile app. We can also check out our website. That's www.fastjobs.ph. So we have a lot of, um, we actually have a lot of job openings right now in, in various industries. So um, you definitely um, would want to um, check it out, start building your profile. Um, we also have a partnership with Paymaya that will um, actually incentivize you as well when you apply for your first job. So you might want to um, check out uh, that one as well. 
And of course, if you have any questions, um, feel free to um, post them on the LIAB support group. And yeah, if you need, um, yeah, you can always tag me if you have specific questions for me. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Cheska has been a very active member of the Lee of Support Career Support Group. Um, when someone asks questions, like when she has time, she is able to answer to some of them. So we're really providing a different perspective from, from what we have in, in the UB. So I really appreciate that she's part of that and she's active in the group. Um, so if you have any more questions, you can either connect with her or you can post your question there and tag her and she will reply. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Cheska, for your time today. And thank you for all of the viewers right now live for those who ask questions um we are now down to our last talk uh on the series tomorrow so that's at 10 a.m and we'll be hearing from a product manager from caliber so very interesting that we're hearing from from all these different platforms because they do have their own strengths and benefits so i love that like from for each day we know like what each platform brings to the table um, and that's very, very interesting for, for those who are looking for jobs right now because some of you might have to like leverage your network. Some of you might really be looking into like entry-level jobs or hidden gem companies. At least you like you know which platforms um, you can really maximize and what features in those platforms you can, you can try out. So thank you so much uh, again, Cheska, and thank you for all of the viewers. Um, see you again tomorrow at 10 a.m. Bye. Bye, guys.